Hello everybody, my name is Lewis Rabbon and welcome to the Tilehurst End YouTube channel. This is a new series on the channel where I'll be giving you a weekly roundup of all things Reading FC. If that is something you would be interested in watching, then please like the video, but more importantly, subscribe for weekly Reading FC content. But for now, let's get into the video. So let's kick this off with the news that everyone wants to know about, transfer news. And unfortunately on Monday, uh, Gabriel Osho rejected a new contract at the club. According to at Talk Reading on Twitter, uh, he said that the contract that Gabriel Osho was offered was 50% of what he was on when he was a second year pro at 19. He wanted to stay at the club, but he is sure that he will get a better, better offer elsewhere. And so am I. Courtney Friday also suggested that Wickham is probably a good option. And to be honest, uh, I think it is purely because local um, might be quite cheap. Youngster as well, obviously impressed in the last couple of games of the season. Which is really unfortunate news as well, but it also shows how bad our financial situation is at the moment. Um, if we're only offering a 19-year-old 50% of what he was on, which is basically like a under-23 contract, um, it really shows how badly uh, our finances have depreciated. But it is really unfortunate that it has to be him. Obviously, he impressed at right back playing out of position a little bit in the last couple of games of the season. Obviously, he's naturally a centre-back. Um, but I think you, I think you'll be able to get at least an EFL team uh, going for American League ones, probably his level at the moment. Um, whether obviously last time, actually no, last time he was uh, in League One, he went on Bristol Rovers alone, and he did all right. Like, and then obviously he went to Yeovil and non-league and impressed there. So um, hopefully he can get a good run of first team opportunities in uh, the lower league somewhere, maybe League One or League Two. But um, it is really unfortunate that we've let another youngster with a lot of high potential uh, go which is really disappointing um, on the club's part but uh, we'll just have to move on um, but yeah it's just a really unfortunate departure and now let's move on to another potential departure uh, probably the biggest transfer story of Reading FC summer so far John Swift uh, Sheffield United had a £4 million bid rejected after they bid £3.5 million a couple of weeks ago and that was also rejected um, it doesn't look like Reading wanting to let him go at all obviously we thought that Sheffield United were going to get him. Obviously, Leeds and Aston Villa have also been linked, but Sheffield United are clearly uh, wanting him a lot more than those two. And it looks like they're trying to try and get him a bit on the cheap, obviously try and bid cheap and cheap and a little bit more, and maybe try and force the player to get a move through. But from what uh, from what Reading fans have been saying, and obviously what I've seen as well, um, it doesn't really look like he's that type of player. He doesn't look like a type of player to hand in a transfer request or do anything like that. I don't think that's really him... I don't think that's really his style. He was a crucial player to our performances last season, and I think I speak for all running FC fans in saying that we hope that he doesn't leave. And we now go into, yet again, another reported departure. Michael Elise is, according to Football Insider, being looked at by Leeds. According to some cl sources close to Leeds, they are uh, the Championship champions... Uh, However, on the flip side, Courtney Friday reports that the Championship champions, there's been no concrete interest or bids from them at the moment. Uh, obviously, a potential sale has apparently been talked about amongst directors to ease the financial worries if a significant bid came in. But it would obviously take a big offer to sell. Uh, obviously, probably our most talented youngster um, coming through. He played a pivotal part in the since the restart uh, at the end of our season. Uh, young player of the season last season as well. Um, he's... He's dynamite. I think he's really good. Uh, at least made 19 appearances for Championship in the league last season. 13 starts and 6 substitute appearances, only gathering 1 assist. But it does seem that Mark Bowen is starting to play him a little more. And he seems to be a bit more pivotal in the way we play. Um, very tricky player. We've been playing him more on the uh, on the wing. But wingers is definitely somewhere we need to um, try and um, reinforce this summer. Um but can I see him leaving? I don't think so. I don't, to be honest, I don't think we're going to really get rid of many big players um, this season. I don't really see anyone leaving. Um, but yeah, I think if Michael Elise did go, uh, it would obviously be a shame. But by the looks of things, it doesn't look like it's going to be happening anytime soon. But let's move away from the transfer news for one minute and head to our under-23s. The under-23s and under-18s returned to training on Monday, but the under-23s have had a managerial change. It was confirmed on Wednesday that Scott Marshall has left his role as under-23s manager with his assistant Mehmet Ali and Michael Jilts taking charge for the time being. 
Obviously, Scott Marshall has been at the club for a long time. Uh, he handed Gabriel Rosho and Tom McIntyre their debuts in his caretaker spell in charge following the sacking of Paul Clement and before the hiring of Jose Gomez. Uh, it's quite sad to see him leave. Obviously, quite pivotal in the way uh, our youth setup has worked. But we do wish him the best of luck in his future. And also confirmed this week, another staff change as well. Eddie Lattimore, the head of physical performance at Reading, has left the role and has left the club to link back up with Paul Clement at Circle Bruges. Apparently he had a lot of disagreements with Mark Bowen, as have a lot of staff members, uh, obviously following the departures of Rui Santos and uh, other Portuguese staff following Jose Gomez's reign. Uh, and we also wish him the best of luck in Belgium. And former under-23s Royals defender Akin Odomayo, who was released in the summer, has had a trial at Swindon Town and featured in their 8-0 win against Nuneaton. Obviously he's made his first team debut uh, in the FA Cup this season and then obviously went on loan to Waterford in Ireland with Andre Burley. I, th I thought there might be some sort of future there but we have re we've released a dozen under 23 players and obviously he was one of them. Um, I think he's, I think Swindon might be a bit of a level too high for him. I feel like maybe League 2, uh, maybe even the high echelon, higher echelons of a non-league, maybe National League or National League North or South uh, might be better for him to start off but if he can get a a, d a decent contract at Swindon and prove himself there then go ahead but we also we wish him the best of luck at Swindon too and there was news in the week that Arsenal have made 55 redundancies and the Athletic are reporting that Brian McDermott is one of them now there have been a lot of rumours going around and a lot of fans have been asking like whether Brian McDermott could come back to Reading in some sort of scouting or director of football capacity and I could see that and to be honest I'd, I'd be happy with it obviously he was part he was Scout, uh, he was a scout for Steve Coppel in what arguably our most successful period as a football club. And clearly, obviously, with Brian McDermott being a scout, that clearly worked uh, under Steve Coppel. So I don't see why he can't come back and help Nicky Shorey out uh, as a scout. Um, I think it'd be really good for the club and it would also it would help bring back the ethos of the club and how it was back then. Right, and we're now going to move on to elsewhere in the championship that which also obviously affects Reading FC, so it has to be spoken about. So on Tuesday, Wigan lost their appeal, and they are officially relegated to League One. They appealed their 12-point deduction, uh, which was put onto this season following their administration. Obviously, it's very sad to see uh, Wigan go down. Uh, they didn't deserve it at all. They're solidly mid-table. Um, but yeah, sad to see them go down. And then we move on to the Championship playoff final, which has confirmed that we are going to be playing Brentford next season and not Fulham. Uh, I personally wanted Brentford to win. I thought they deserved it across the season as well. Obviously finishing third uh, in the league and narrowly missing out on automatic promotion, winning uh, eight of their last ten games, obviously bottling it near the end against Stoke and Barnsley, which really hindered them. Uh, then obviously losing the first leg to Swansea and then just really doing really well in the second leg uh, against Swansea. Um, but they were condemned to a 2-1 defeat. Um, Joe Bryan was the start of the show at Wembley, scoring two goals. Uh, the left back scoring two goals. Uh, I wouldn't have seen that coming. Um, obviously, the first goal was a free kick that caught David Raya completely uh, off guard, and he just put it past him. And David Raya has received a lot of abuse and, on social media, which is expected. And then the second goal was a nice one-two between him and Kamara, and he just put put it passed at right into the bottom right corner. And then uh, Brentford managed to get a goal late on, but it wasn't enough. And Fulham are now a Premier League team yet again. So we will be facing Brentford next season in the Championship. But the relegation drama still isn't over as Charlton have appealed Sheffield Wednesday's point deduction with backing of up to nine other Championship clubs. Obviously Sheffield Wednesday got deducted 12 points onto next season. But because the charges were put on them in November, Charlton are appealing it in the hope that they go down and Charlton stay up instead. Personally, I think Charlton are well within their rights to appeal it obviously in Sheffield Wednesday got their charges in November so why it's taken the EFL nine months to get that decision done is utterly ridiculous and I think Charlton should they get the appeal I think it's definitely deserved obviously very unlucky to go down in the circumstances and obviously we played a pivotal part towards the end of the season beating them 1-0 um, which Charlton probably arguably should have got a draw out of. obviously there were a couple of decisions went our way and they'll be looking back at games like that and Thinking, well, if we had, if the referees hadn't uh, been so kind to the other teams, then we might have stayed up. But they'll be looking towards this appeal now, and should they get it, I completely back it. And we had Bournemouth finally appoint Eddie Howe's successor, the long-awaited 
uh, manager has been appointed, and it is Eddie Howe's former assistant manager, Jason Tindall. He's been at the club for a long, long time now as a player and an assistant manager, and he has now got been given a three-year deal as Bournemouth manager. Now, I personally think this could go either way. Obviously, this could go absolutely terribly. Obviously, no managerial experience. Obviously, he was assistant manager to Eddie Howe, but uh, whether he can fulfil that manager role is yet to be seen. Um, but it could go pretty well. Obviously, he knows all the players. Bournemouth have quite a tight-knit squad um, with them keeping hold of most of the, at least the defence um, from the team that went up. Obviously, they're still in contract discussions or contract discussions with Andrew Sermon, Simon Francis, uh, and Charlie Daniels. Um, but yeah, this could be a really good or a really bad appointment. Uh, Bournemouth fans seem quite mixed about it. But um, yeah, I, I wish them the best of luck. At Bournemouth, uh, and now we're going to head into the Championship transfer news. And the big transfer news in the Championship was that Nathan Ake left Bournemouth and has joined Manchester City on a five year deal for £41 million. Obviously, Bournemouth getting a lot of money from that deal, um, and they'll, they'll be sad to see their arguably their best player leave. Um, obviously, a highly rated young Dutch centre back, um, and I think he'll do very well at Manchester City, but obviously, Bournemouth. I think it was inevitable that he was going to go. Obviously, a lot of other players are probably going to leave, like Callum Wilson and Josh King. Uh, Ryan Fraser's obviously already been released. So, it'll be a tough season for Bournemouth. Um, but Nathan Ake, with all that money coming in, will they reinvest it into the playing squad? That's yet to be seen. It was announced today that Corey Smith has left Bristol City after six years at the club following the end of his contract. Wayne Routledge has signed a new one-year deal at Swansea, meaning it is his tenth consecutive season at the club. And Stoke have completed the signing of Morgan Fox after his release from Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, the left-back rejected a new deal at the club. And personally, I think this is quite a good signing for Stoke. Obviously, he is somewhat, he's probably one of the best crossing left-backs in the league. And he will fit Stoke's direct side completely. Obviously, they released Stephen Ward, so they've been needing someone in that left-back position. And to be honest, I don't, I don't see why we didn't go for him. Obviously, we're now lacking uh, in the left-back position following the release of Jordan Abita and Tyler Blackett, meaning that Omar Richards is our only first-team left-back at the moment. And that would have been a really good signing for us, experienced 26, so he's still he's going into his prime now. Um, so I think that would have been a decent signing, but Stoke have got him, and it's a really good signing for them. Speaking of Sheffield Wednesday's released players, Stephen Fletcher uh, rejected a new deal at the club and is now in talks with Celtic. Neil Lennon has confirmed that they are in talks with his agent. And Championship newcomers Norwich have rejected a £10 million bid for 22-year-old left-back Jamal Lewis from English champions Liverpool. Liverpool are reportedly looking for a backup left-back to left-back... No, that doesn't make sense. Liverpool are reportedly looking at a backup for left-back Andy Robertson and Jamal Lewis is meant to be top of their list, but apparently their valuation uh, to Norwich is, is completely different. I think Norwich are apparently looking for about £20 million, uh, and rightly so. He's a 22-year-old left-back, you know, he's young. Uh, he's got potential as well to go far in the Premier League, I think. And I think he'd be wasting his career if he went to Liverpool. I don't think he's ever going to get ahead of Andy Robertson at this point in his career. And um, I think Norwich will do well to keep hold of him. But obviously he's got a deal to about 2022 or 2023. So he's got a long time left. But yeah, I think it'll be really good if Norwich keep hold of him. And there have been some departures uh, at Brentford following their player final loss to Fulham. Kamahelo, Makotjo and Nico Corellis have both been released after they came to the end of their contracts. And Drew Yearwood, who only signed last summer from South End, has made the move to the MLS, joining New York Red Bulls for an undisclosed fee. Obviously, Brentford are the kings of recruitment, and I thought Drew Yearwood was a really good signing. Obviously, a young box-to-box -box centre midfielder. He uh, did really well at South End coming through their academy, and I thought he was really going to push on this season and maybe push Josh Silva uh, or Matthias Jensen for a position in the team, but unfortunately it hasn't worked out for him, and now he's gone to America. Luton have also made their first signing of the summer, signing Jordan Clark on a free transfer from Accrington following the end of his contract. Jordan Clark have been a magnificent servant at Stanley, obviously spending the last four years at the club, and now he will be trying to push himself and prove himself at the championship level. And finally on the transfer front, Cameron McGeehan has left Barnsley and joined KB Oostend for an undisclosed fee. And that's it for the first weekly roundup. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like the video and if you haven't already, subscribe. Make sure to follow the Tilehurst Ends Twitter and also check out our website. But for now guys, see you later.